issues of even how to go around uh, uh, the laws that exist <laughs> that yes watch any bunge sharia love when you watch you usually don't have that conversation <laughs> well you know you, you know in um, in this country i'll tell you around around especially county governments uh, most most governors have found themselves in that position whereby uh, you know like even in kambu uh, we have a whole set of, of, of a wing of, of enforcement an enforcement wing mm -hmm. uh, remember we had this issue about uh, the, the the car soba uh, deal whereby mm -hmm. you know the, the, there's an enforcement wing that goes around uh, you know closing pubs and 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 uh, removing people and, and at the and, command and, of the governor and, uh, of course under the command of the governor mm -hmm. and and so so that tells you that's not something that's not happening around counties yes. it, it does they, they have they, they have teams that they have built around what used to be originally the city council was carries <coughs> you know they, they have built such wings around themselves and and so uh, they do it uh, they do it uh, the definitely when you, you look at the exact powers where they, they, they lie in terms of uh, the police and I had Sonko talk about it that hapa kuna police na, 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 na mimi uh, sina, sina, yungu. sina yungu. the truth is that actually the police are not under the governor mm -hmm. uh, the police are under the national police service command and then so they should be left as so the people who are normally under their command are those, are those guys yes. that they've recruited. You know, I, I, my, my only wish is, is, is that they, they resolve this well. I mean, get to do things yes. the right way. And uh, granted, uh, despite the fact that this conversation seems to have uh, uh, secured the release of uh, uh, one person, yes. uh, we saw Waititu's wife actually uh, being arraigned uh, and charged with constructing a building in Nairobi Central Business District without proper approval. Uh, she denied the charge before Principal Magistrate Mary Njage, who released her on an 80,000 shilling cash bail, which is not even the amount mentioned in this phone call. So uh, I think these are two different processes, whatever the governor may have been talking about in that alleged conversation mm -hmm. and uh, a different process where those arrested were actually arraigned and released on cash bail. So whether or not that uh, conversation of, of, was of any consequence uh, remains to be seen. But uh, back to this issue of recording, of course, we had uh, the very first time uh, issues of recording conversations came up was when John Gidongo had a conversation with uh, uh, Kiraitu Murungi, back then when Kiraitu Murungi was a cabinet minister, to do with Anglo leasing scandal. Mm. Yes, it served a purpose in terms of exposing uh, <coughs> some, uh, well, an attempt to cover up something within government. Mm. Uh, some people may think that, yes, this is a legitimate way of actually exposing corruption, which we are fighting right now, or a legitimate way of actually trying to uh, expose attempts to flout the law. It's a big debate uh, globally, even now in the US. Mm. You know Omarosa and Donald Trump yes. are engaged in an exchange over some leakages um, um, between uh, that Omarosa did uh, when having a conversation with, I believe it was uh, Trump's uh, chief of staff. Mm -hmm. And it's generated a huge storm. She even released a clip of uh, her conversation with the president himself. With, with the president himself. Uh, you know, um, there is a way that public officers and state officers ought to conduct themselves whether in public or in private. In fact, our constitution says that a public officer or a state officer like Omatangi and I mm -hmm. must conduct ourselves whether in public or in private yes. in a manner that brings honor and dignity to that office. And so for me, you can use um, such leaks to bring about transparency and to ensure that public officers are put on the spotlight for their actions in public or in private. It didn't even start with Gidongo. I think WikiLeaks uh, mm -hmm. came first. And WikiLeaks back then was now the equivalent of what we are doing today with the s smartphones. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time Ababu Namwamba recorded a conversation with Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. There will always be issues of breach of trust, uh, particularly when you're having a conversation and you don't tell me that you're recording it. Yes. Uh, th there'll be that element that you, know, you, you breach my trust. But for me, when I see a leak, the issue is the content. Yes. not the act of recording mm -hmm. because nowadays that, you can record does it, does it necessarily raise any legal issues uh, for example that if i record a phone call between you and me uh, to whatever end that uh, probably uh, it could be there could be some criminal culpa I, culpability. I, I believe there's the issue of consent mm -hmm. there's an issue of consent because if you're going to engage in a conversation and you don't tell me 
to grant you consent to record that conversation, I believe there could be some culpability. Mm -hmm. That is why in the GPDR, uh, uh, General Public Data Regulations, that the European Union uh, uh, brought into force in mm -hmm. May, even on a website, for you to get uh, an email, you must opt in. Yes. And that opting in is, is a sign of consent. Mm -hmm. And so I believe uh, ethically, there ought to be consent for a recording to be carried out. But yes. let's go beyond that because public officers and state officers, we have taken the decision to live our lives under, under the spotlight. And so I would not argue too much about consent. I would be more concerned about the, the content, content okay. of my conversation. Yes. And the content of this conversation between Sonko and uh, Waititu there's something wrong in it because mm -hmm. they are negotiating on how to break the law. Yes. Yeah. Quite a number yeah. of journalists call you uh, for comment on one, yeah. two things. Uh, uh, would you be okay if at all they recorded that conversation <laughs> without your knowledge, without yeah, your consent? Yeah, you know, Fred, uh, one day I remember the, the, the boss of NIS was appearing before a committee. That time I happened to have been chairing that committee. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I took the liberty to ask him, is it true that uh, you normally record all our phone calls? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you know, he looked at me and then uh, he struggled for, a, for an answer. Mm -hmm. That's the former. And then he said, uh, it's necessary. <laughs> to so all your phone calls are recorded. To do so. <laughs> Actually, and the law uh, requires a court order, uh, 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 strictly uh, speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, then... Um, you also, you also probably would want to venture into, remember just recently we passed a law uh, on uh, criminalizing slander on mm -hmm. social media. And, 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 and that took uh, you know, a bit of a different turn. But if you look at, for, for example, uh, the inclusion of the requirement on recording, and somehow conspicuously it would have been missing from, it, it missed from such a, a, a law. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have been uh, important then to have it in there. But, but um, and then thirdly, ask yourself, uh, for example, when you, when Safaricom or any other service provider, uh, 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 you, when you're making a call to them, they always tell you that, uh, you know, this call may be recorded, yes. even mm -hmm. in companies for mm -hmm. quality control services and, and uh, purposes. And, and, and so that, that tells you, uh, including what Senator Kajuang said earlier, these recording apps are free uh, in app stores. And, and so and it is happening. And, 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 and so, so, so it happens. I think, I think really uh, this would only border largely on what Senator was saying, on, on the personal choice of, of yourself uh, to determine, you know, on, on, on the moral ethical scale, you know, where do you want to, 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 to bridge it? Then, and you would decide, I want to release this. Two ways, in my view, uh, would, 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 would suffice. One if you are releasing that kind of content so that so that it would be transparent what you were doing mm -hmm. uh, was in the open for that matter or then you had ill intent mm -hmm. but but um because also you see potentially if you take certain action and you've not uh, you don't follow it with a release like that it would be misconstrued that you are doing it probably out of vengeance or mm -hmm. out of uh, you know either, either ill will uh, probably I would lastly say that um, I believe it's, it's, it's really ultimately the conscience. Mm -hmm. if, even yourself, Fred, when somebody calls you and then you are in, in a discussion, also, also, you know, be measured in what you say. Don't go, you know, spitting out everything. Uh, you know, and, and, uh, because even if, even if that person is not recording you, I mean, yeah. you could be recorded as well. <laughs> you know. So yes. I, I, believe, I, I remember uh, this uh, discussion that we're talking <laughs> about, this uh, alleged <laughs> discussion between uh, two governors, one of them tells the other, Punguza pere, 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 pere. Uh, but probably that's what you're saying. Be measured in what you say. Now, be, uh, beca because we're talking about uh, Governor Waititu and Governor Sonko uh, on this particular issue, uh, as we end this particular discussion about what they were talking about, I think it would only be fair no. to ask you about uh, comments attributed to the Governor for Kiambu earlier this week with regard to the demolitions in Nairobi. And he said that probably uh, we should consider moving the rivers instead of uh, demolishing buildings because uh, it is actually costly to demolish buildings. Uh, well, he actually was on this show yesterday and explained that this is a practice that has actually worked elsewhere. Uh, there are issues of canalization, building embankments around rivers to change their course or probably uh, allow uh, them to coexist with uh, certain infrastructural developments. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I, I would want to um, comment on that by taking a step backwards to a week or two back 
when the governor was in the U.S. Uh, addressing the uh, Kiambu diaspora in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And there were issues about the hospital in Kiambu. And the governor said that uh, the hospital is full because the services are excellent. Mm -hmm. And uh, furthermore, it is full of outsiders. Mm -hmm. And I asked myself, who are these outsiders? Mm -hmm. And I asked the senator for Kiambu, who are the outsiders? Mm -hmm. If Kiambu is tied to Nairobi at the hip, look at Runda. Uh, part of Runda is in Kiambu. Mm -hmm. Look at the high, uh, you know, high cost uh, residences coming up. They're expanding towards Kiambu. In fact, towards Machakos mm -hmm. and towards Kajiado, you find <coughs> the middle class. Yes. The upper class are expanding towards, uh, to Kiambu. To, towards Kiambu. And Kiambu, um, and the Senator Matangi has always argued that Kiambu ought to get even more money. Mm -hmm. Because during the day, people are trooping to Nairobi to work. At night, they come back to Kiambu mm -hmm. to sleep. How then do you build a mentality that the outsiders in Kiambu, mm -hmm. aren't they contributing to the economy of Kiambu? Mm -hmm. And through that contribution, aren't they then supposed to get services in public institutions? Mm -hmm. And so when a week or two later, Governor Waititu made the comments that he made, and he has become, um, uh, you, you know, um, <laughs> a hero <laughs> on, on, on social media with all sorts of memes mm -hmm. uh, uh, attributed to him. I saw one saying that his teacher has now been arrested, his geography <laughs> teacher <laughs> has been arrested. <laughs> and another one was saying that his, his classmate has, has also, also been, been arrested. arrested. <laughs> because <laughs> and I think maybe Sonko will be going to close Punjab University mm -hmm. for, 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 for creating uh, Governor IT too. But yes, if you look at it seriously, there is a point he's making. But the point is out of context in what we are dealing with. Because even if you talk of uh, canalization, how are you going to do canals along Nairobi River? Mm -hmm. Are you going to do canals along the, the riparian uh, 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 resources that we are talking about in Nairobi? That requires proper planning. And I do hope that in Kiambu, uh, already there's a spatial plan that they have put in place because it is that spatial plan that then will uh, govern how you're going to use your land resources. You can come up with a new design of mm -hmm. your county. I do hope he already has that in Kiambu. Yes. But put in context, in the context of what you're looking at right now in Kenya, is that uh, we need to continue to make sure that we've gotten rid of uh, infra infrastructure or, or structures that have been put up on land that is supposed to be public. And it is not only riparian land. We must broaden it to other government uh, land mm -hmm. holdings. Okay. Uh, you know, the, there's been so much focus about uh, riparian land, but we, we, we know the problems you're having with the Mombasa Road expansion. Even for road co construction, yes. Yes, even, even for road construction, even road reserves. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at it in totality. I want to think that uh, Governor Waititu, his statements could have been uh, made uh, as, as a light, uh, you know, as, well, as he, has, he, he has continued to defend his uh, statement and says he will stand by it because this mm -hmm. is what should happen. Do you agree with the governor? Uh, well, well let, let, let me let me start with what uh, with what Senator Kajong spoke about, uh, especially just quickly to elaborate on on that point about um, you know outsiders and the concept that, that, that they flood the hospitals of Kiambu. And uh, first, it is important for Kenyans to know that the reason why. Uh, there was created conditional grants for level five hospitals mm -hmm. around the country is because it is acknowledged uh, you know by understanding that that hospitals at that level cater for all mm -hmm. uh, people from across boundaries and uh, you know co counties and so on and such that for example if it's a hospital in Kiambu in Akuru and, and, and such other places like Isumu why you have those kind of hospitals uh, which which border on referral hospitals really uh, those conditional grants that are normally given are intended to take care of that service uh, that kind of service and two then again it's on, on the issue of planning you know w w once you're a governor of a cosmopolitan or an urban county then also definitely your priority priorities must be uh, arranged in such a way that that you know where to put what that notwithstanding as senator has said I've also moved uh, the Commission on Revenue Allocation. That has been one of my passionate subjects, mm -hmm. that we must take a second look at the reallocation and allocation of funds, uh, su 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 such that we'll be addressing the pressure. And I, and I introduced uh, and, and made a quest that there be introduced a new parameter called service pressure that allows the Commission on Revenue Allocation to 
introduce a certain percentage of the national kitty that goes to counties like Kiambu, such that when you are faced with that kind of uh, requirement that you give services to people who work in Nairobi and come to live in your county and you house them from all over the country, that you have okay. an extra kitty that you can deal with. Okay. Now lastly, there is on, um, now the, issue of on, on, on the, the issue of, of, of moving rivers. And, and I would like to take you really actually with what Senator says. You know, we have to uh, to, to separate. I, th I think uh, let's not be over comical on, 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 on matters of national interest because sometimes if you, if you take such a comical position you, you, stand, you find his statements the, 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 then I mean you know like on the, the question <coughs> of uh, those outsiders you know and they've had, they've had these uh, rivers and so on uh, I, I think it is good to apply uh, you know the mind uh, properly uh, you know with that because i think sometimes we become of a political if you ask if you ask me you know in, in most of our comments and that's why a leader uh, requires to be balanced balanced in, in the sense that um, when you're commenting on on political issues maybe about uh, mobilization of voters and so on you can be as funny as you like mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes when, uh, when when the bar rises to 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 uh, giving direction and making comments that would have influence on the way people make decisions then then you also raise the bar of, of, of the utterances that that one makes so, so that it becomes you know instructive and 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 informative but you, the, the governor you know, believes you know, that he actually has a point no. in, uh, in talking about capitalization uh, well, well uh, you, you know you know you know what, what I would be saying Fred is you know we have different opinions all of us and everyone is entitled to their opinion mm -hmm. I, I think um, we, you know if, if, if definitely the governor finds and feels that that is his opinion he has an, an uh, absolute entitlement to it the question is once it is uh, you know positioned in what interests they mm -hmm. are for the for, for the people of the country at large you know where does that opinion lie okay. and, 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 I, and i think the answer is out there in the open. okay yeah. time now for a break when we come back we take a look at that different headline away from what happened between uh, on this alleged conversation between uh, Governor Sonko and Governor Waititu. Uh, we want to take a look at the conduct of uh, members of parliament, especially members of the National Assembly. Uh, it is noted that uh, my panelists today are uh, from the Senate. But there's an, uh, a cartoon, the cartoon on page 14 of uh, the Daily Nation. There's a group <coughs> of pigs inside a car driving uh, past parliament buildings. And uh, the pigs are saying, "Attention! You're giving us, you're giving this species a bad name." Basically, uh, the fact, the reference uh, with regard to members of parliament, uh, the reference that we've uh, now become accustomed to, M pigs, that that is actually giving the pigs a bad name, and uh, that basically plays out uh, in this discussion with regard to the conduct of members of parliament. We'll be looking at that after the break.